Hi everybody, I'm Professor Rad, and today we're going to talk about area, specifically the area of triangles, rectangles, and squares. So let's get started. The area of a shape is the space occupied by the shape. You can kind of think of like the area as the amount that is filled in. So if you think about like if you um, get a rug, like you get an area rug, the area rug is covering the area that the rug is covering. So whatever space that rug covers, that's the area. So for example, here, if I were to paint in this triangle, that would be the area versus the perimeter, which is the distance walking around. Now with perimeter, we can remember that general idea of distance around a shape. But for area, we do have to remember these specific formulas because the formula for area is going to be different depending on the shape. I'm going to actually start with rectangles. So the area for a rectangle is length times width. So you multiply the length times the width of the shape. Um, so you could think of it like... Um, if you had like little one inch squares of paper, right, you could kind of make like a little grid to form the rectangle. And to know how many little one inch squares of paper you would need, you would count how many you would need across and how many you would need going up. And then you could multiply them and that would tell you the total number you would need for that grid. That's where this formula is coming from. Now, if I cut a diagonal across the rectangle, then I end up getting two triangles. So the formula for a triangle is half the formula for a rectangle. So if rectangle is length times width, the area of a triangle is going to be half of that. Now, not all of our triangles look like the one that I described here. So when you have a triangle that looks like this one, for example, the base is the floor of the triangle. And the height is the distance from the top of the triangle down to the floor. So that's why we're using base and height as opposed to like length and width. And then lastly, for a square, a square is like a special type of rectangle. So you could multiply the length and width of this rectangle side times side, and that will get you side squared. So um, if you, like me, have difficulty memorizing stuff, instead of memorizing this formula for square, you could just think of squares as special forms of rectangles. So the rectangle formula works for the squares. The triangle is a little different because we've got that one half. Now, something else I want to point out about all three of these formulas is that you are multiplying dimensions as opposed to adding dimensions. What that means, like if you have inches plus inches, you get inches. But if you have inches times inches, you're going to get inches times inches, which is inches squared. Just like here, side times side is side squared. Inches times inches is inches squared. So whenever you are finding area, the units are always squared units. So you might see that as like inches squared, or you might see it as like SQFT, that would be square feet. So when we give our units for areas, they're always going to be in like squared units. So if you think about like if you're looking at a house or an apartment and it's got like 800 square footage, what they're saying there is if you look at the floor plan, right, the floor of the house, the area of that floor would be 800 square feet. So they're giving you an area because you've got square footage. So let's go ahead and use these formulas to help us find some areas. Alrighty, so to help me with these examples, I've got sort of an abbreviated format of my formulas here on the side. So area of a rectangle is length times width, area of a square is S squared, and area of a triangle is one half the base times the height. So when I'm gonna find the area of a shape, I wanna make sure I'm identifying what type of shape it is, because that's gonna help me know which formula to use. So for this first problem, A, 
it says a rectangle with a width of 12 25ths inches and a length of 15 16 inches. Okay, they are coming right out the door here with some fractions. Fractions are just numbers. They're our friends too. Okay, so focus first on what shape do we have? So we have a rectangle. So we're going to use the rectangle formula. So area is length times width. They have a width of 12 25th inches. And a length of 15 16 Okay, so I've got my formula. I know L is here and I know W, so I can go ahead and substitute into this formula. So the length is 15 16 and the width is 12 25 Now I could go ahead and um, multiply using my techniques for multiplying fractions or we can use our calculator, which is what I'm gonna use in this case. So I'm gonna do 15 16 times 12 25th. And I end up getting, it's hard for me to see from my angle, nine over 20. All right. Now remember that units for area are square units. So our sides were in inches, so this is going to be inches squared. Please be careful, I'm not going to square this answer. Okay, I've already done what I needed to do to get the area. What's being squared here are the units only. So we have 9 over 20 square inches. Let's go ahead and look at this next one. So this is a rectangle. So we're going to go ahead and use the rectangle formula again. So the area of a rectangle is length times width. Our length is 4.5 and our width is 3. So again, we have all the information we need to substitute into this formula. So length is 4.5 and width is three. And we get 13.5. Again, each of the sides was being measured in inches, so we're gonna have inches squared. Or if you prefer, you can also write your answer as 13.5 square inches. So that's another way to write your answer. All right, let's do another one. So here I have a shape where we've got 2.51 on one side and on the other side. So this time we have a square. So we're gonna use the square formula so the area of a square is side squared. So in this case, our side is 2.51 feet. So for the area, we're going to substitute that in 2.51 and then we'll square it. Oh gosh, okay. 6.3001. Okay, they didn't tell us to round on this one, so I'm not going to round it. I'm going to keep it how it is. And we had feet. <coughs> oh, excuse me. We had feet, so we're going to have feet squared. All right. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, um, so I noticed that there were some triangles missing here. So, oh, I'm pointing off screen, we had some triangles formula and we didn't use that at all for these problems. So 
let's go do some problems with triangles. Okay, so the reason that I postponed triangles a little bit is because depending on what the triangle looks like, it can be a little bit tricky to identify the base and the height. So I just wanted to indicate like these three triangles here would all have the same area, even though they all three of them look different. And that's because they all have a base of 1.75 inches. Okay, so the base is the floor. And they all have a height of one inch. So the height is the distance from the tip of the triangle at the top down to the base. Over here, that one inch actually is one of the sides. Whereas on this first one, it's not. That dotted line is just telling us that's the height. It's not a side of the triangle. Other times you get this triangle that kind of leans over past its base where it ends. So sometimes you might see the floor extended so that you can measure this distance from the top to the floor. So again, just to indicate, triangles can all look a little bit different, but the main idea is the base is the floor, and then the height is the distance from the top corner down to that floor, however that gets measured. So let's go ahead and find the areas of these three triangles. Our formula is area equals one half times the base times the height. Now, if that bothers you having that fraction there, you could write it in decimal form. Nothing wrong with writing it as 0.5. It's up to you, whichever uh, makes it easier for you to work through the questions, okay? So on this first triangle, our floor is six millimeters. So the base is six and the height is four millimeters. So our area is gonna be one half times the base, which is six, times the height, which is four. So I think that's gonna give us 12. So we have 0.5 times six times four. Yeah, we get 12. And then just as a reminder, units for area, always squared. So we have millimeters squared. Let's go ahead and work through the next one. So, okay, so since this one has fractions and mixed numbers, I'm going to stick to the one half. Our base is the floor. So the base is one and two fifths inches. And the height is the distance from the floor to that top corner, which they're telling us is four fifths of an inch. So area is one half times the base, so one and two fifths, and the height is four fifths. Okay, so I opted to write my multiplication out this time using parentheses instead of like this cross, because whenever I have mixed numbers, I find it um, that I tend to make mistakes if I don't put parentheses around the whole mixed number because then I might end up thinking this is one times two fifths, which is not what that is. So uh, when I have fractions in this format, like with mixed numbers, I like those parentheses. It helps keep me from making mistakes. So let's go ahead and throw this into here. So we have one half times one and two fifths times four fifths. Okay, we get 14 20 fifths. And since the units were inches, we're gonna have square inches. Da, 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 da. I like the victory music for especially troubling ones, right? Um, genuinely, that's what I would do to help keep myself sane while working on very difficult math homework. It's just, hey, any place you can find joy, right? <laughs> so let's go ahead and do this last triangle together. So um, area is still one half the base times the height. 
Our base is the floor, so 0.4 meters. And the height is 0.3 meters. All right, we know the drill now. Our area is 1 half times that base of 0.4 times the height of 0.3. So area is going to equal one half times point four times point three. So we get six hundredths m meters squared. Do, 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 do. All right, cool. So that's it for finding our areas. Um, I wouldn't want to leave you without some problems to practice on your own. So here are some questions you can try out. Um, in the next video, we are going to continue our conversation of area. And this time we're going to throw letters in because, you know, we got to keep it, got to keep it fun. Uh, make a little bit algebraic for um, the area. So looking forward to seeing you then. In the meantime, have a wonderful day.